All right. Um, hello and well, welcome to the Horror Hour. My name's Utah. I'm one of the co-hosts here. And normally we discuss, debate, and disagree on all things horror, but today I'm really excited because I recently saw uh, a film um, called Sound of Violence, and I've got the writer and director, Alex Neuer, here with us today. And we'll be actually talking about um, a documentary he's been working on, along with the short that, in well, inspired the feature film and all of that, because quite frankly, I'm really obsessed with it. Um, one, let's talk about the documentary because I learned so much about 808s. Um, what brought you to that, um, that passion or wanting to look into that? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, <laughs> it's great. It's great to, to talk about all things movies at any time, but the fact is your kind words about my film mean a lot. I really appreciate it. So yeah, very happy to be, uh, on today. And, uh, yeah, so yeah, the, 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 the documentary, five years of my life, uh, dedicated to a drum machine. It sounds quite, uh, quite crazy like that, but it's, uh, um, so a little bit of background is that I, I started my production company in London in 2004 and, um, and we were working in every realm of, of, uh, fashion, music, brand, corporates, and all that. Um, <laughs> but I grew up very much in the art world. I grew up in, um, you know, my, I'm, the, I'm the son of an artist, and I, my mother is also very much involved in the arts. And so I kind of always kind of, I was surrounded by artists my whole life. And so in 2008, I got the opportunity to interview Julian Schnabel. Uh, and I decided that we're going to make a, a, a short documentary about him. Uh, called The Conversation with Julian Schnabel. And uh, that movie kind of got a lot of traction toward a few art fairs. And and so from then on, I decided, well, let's keep going with documentaries. And I made a few uh, short docs. And then my first feature, which was New York Influence City about the New York art scene. And after we premiered that in New York uh, at the uh, um, Armory show, um, we I just, I, I sat down for a lunch with a buddy of mine, a music producer called Arthur Baker, who is notorious for a lot of huge uh, 80s hit like Planet Rock. And we started to talk about, we were meeting to talk about the script he had, but very quickly we just talked music. And, um, and we started to, to, to talk about Planet Rock and, and a few of the other tracks uh, that involved the 808. And, um, and the TR-808 was, just really at the core of our conversation. And then all of a sudden I, I kind of had a light bulb. I, you know, I had just finished that other movie. I was like, I need something new. So <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna tell the story of the 808. So um, my business partner at the time, Alex Dunn, uh, I, I offered him to direct it and, and then the journey began. And so that was very late 2011. Wow. Uh, that, that we jumped on board this, this uh, journey and we started shooting it uh, in March 2012 uh, in Miami for a uh, winter music conference. And, um, and yeah, we started to realize very quickly that the passion for the 808 runs deep in the music industry. And, uh, and with uh, Arthur's uh, little black book, he has the, everybody's number, we started to get some really, really, really huge names. And, and yeah, so we shot this movie over three years. Um, we, wow. we wrapped... The last interview we did was, in fact, the Beastie Boys, uh, who we never thought we would get. And last minute, we got an opportunity. So we, and that was in Halloween 2014. And, uh, and then it premiered at South by Southwest in 2015. And uh, I was drum machine obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was very, like I said, I did not know much about it. And so I was very happy to kind of delve into that that world and also I didn't realize that it originated in Japan so I was just like oh my goodness um that's that's kind of crazy to me um uh, I would like to know then through this process because uh eventually you wound up to the conductor and sound of violence what 
when did you realize you wanted to do a project where uh, essentially <laughs> sounds kill people or um, kind of compel that out, out of someone? Well, that's, you know, it's a good way. It's like, it's like when do we realize that we're that obsessed with sound that we want to kill people <laughs> with it? Um, I, it? You know, interesting. So after we premiered at Sounds By, um, I you know, there was a big conversation of how we're going to release the movie. And so for another year, a year and a half, in fact, it took for us to to kind of figure out a way. We were working with Atlantic Records. Or, uh, and anyway, so long story short, we ended up in late 2016 being uh, released on uh, Apple Music. Mm -hmm. And that sort of crowned that five-year journey between tw late 2011 to late 2016. And I was exhausted. I was so tired. I, I, I you know, it was really the peak of my documentary career. And I, and just the thought of trying to replicate that journey was, I, I, I didn't know if I was ready for it. And uh, this is when my, uh, the, the wisest voice I have in my life called my wife um, uh, turned around to me and she said, you know, maybe it's time that you look at your, at your first passion for movies. Okay. And and she said that like this would be a good time if you're you are, you've been talking about switching to narrative and you've been talking about horror movies now is the time you just you know you're not going to top eight to eight for a while so just how about you look at that and um, and very quickly I started to get my hands um, on on or start to write and develop a few stories um, and getting into conversations about it and. Um, and I started to write and I was developing my, actually my first feature at the time, which was an eco thriller, which never happened. Um, and, uh, but in the midst of that, I just kept reminiscing about drum machines, drum machines, drum machines, drum machines. So when, when the, 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 the other thriller didn't happen, I took the family on a little beach holiday and we were having a great time. And uh, while on the beach with a glass of wine in my hand and everything being absolutely wonderful, I had a light bulb. I should kill somebody with a drum machine. <laughs> random thought at the random time, but but uh, but that thought indeed. And so I came back and and at the American film market that was in 2017. I um, I uh, I met uh, Hanu Aokia, uh, who came on board to produce, and we I wrote it. I um, I made it. I, I tried to make it give it as much sense as I could. And, mm -hmm. um, and there we were with our six and a half minute of mayhem. And, uh, and uh, it's a, it, it, this little, it's a weird one because it's a, it's a short that starts very, very s slowly introduces characters kind of, you know, elusively, and then stuff happens that just turn it into, into, <laughs> and there was a review that, that said that uh, the reviewer wrote that, it was a Sunday evening. I I um, <laughs> I was sitting down to watch a short somebody sent me a screener for. Six minutes later, I'm gulping at my screen, screaming, "Holy shit!" And I was like, "This is this, that that review is just I'm just I I I, I guess I did something right in horror." <laughs> it was. I... I loved Alexis in uh, well in both versions. I would say in the in the conductor and in Sound of Violets. But I just love that kind of grabbing grabbing their coffee. They're kind of upbeat, and you've got that novice or well he oh he he just seems so unsure of himself. And so I just loved as she was coaching. I'm like something's off here. Something's going to happen. And my God, that ending just oh i was like <laughs> i was not expecting that and then you kind of then have alexis you know in their own little world just dancing and you know i was i was like oh my god this is brilliant and i loved it and it's it was gore i love gore i'll be honest but i just was not expecting to see that and then to also work with the beats <laughs> Oh. Yeah, we 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 decided to turn a human body into a into a musical instrument. <laughs> I I mean I'm I'll put the links down below because I want everyone that it was just so good. I mean, that was a wild ride in just six minutes. I was not expecting to go through so many different emotions because, I mean, I was happy for the kid, you know, feeling so sure of himself, and then when the, 
<laughs> oh my god <laughs> i you know the funny thing is um the you know when when i suggested to shift uh the paradigms of of music and murder and just um offer to just you know to to, to give somebody um the opportunity to conduct this musical experiment, hence conductor, and to do it from in such an elusive way. And I'm introducing Alexis in a very simple way. It's funny because I was, you know, I, I tried to uh, help uh, filmmakers and we have a, I'm part of the horror anthology right now where we coach a lot of writing and, um, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm often explaining that in horror, we in, in shorts, we have the ability to not explain everything and to leave little moments of, inf of information that we believe is essential. And so, and, and um, in the, you know, trying to introduce your character is always uh, important. But in this case, I just made it a distilled cup of coffee at the beginning. That's it. And that's, for me, that was the, and, and interestingly, that's, so the, the movie went on to tour many festivals as a short, I won actually a few awards. And I was like, I was really unexpe uh, unexpected because it was like me dealing with my drum machine demons, if you will. Um, <laughs> and, 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 but the fact is, everybody was asking me about Alexis. That's 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 what people were left with. This short is one of the most brutal gore shorts that was touring at the time, and yet uh, non horror people were enjoying it and asking about her. Yeah, I I mean, I wanted to know more. Now, granted, I had already seen Sound of Violence, but w after watching the short, I was like, I could see why. Like, I was. I enjoyed Alexis as the character um, because there was a lot of complexities and just emotions. But man, did I also kind of enjoy Alexis in The Conductor because I felt at that time, it seems like she was in a different headspace um, versus, you know, where we where we see her in Sound of Violence. But I, I did. And the actress who played her in The Conductor was just so good, in my opinion. I just... Oh, Kelly is great. Kelly is great. I keep so seeing, charismatic. I keep seeing... I keep seeing her on TV as well. She's like she she pops up in in, in a lot of things uh, often. No, no, she's great, and she she really we you know it, it was I'm I'm I've been very lucky. Um, the 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 character of Alexis um, prompted some amazing performances, and and it's interesting because obviously the Alexis of the short and the Alexis of the movie are very different. Yes, um, the treatment is very different. Uh, we couldn't do what we did in the short for ninety minutes. Impossible. It was just too, it was too gore. It was too. It was too brutal. And also the, the dynamic of what worked in the story and the sort of surprise, how do we carry that in 90 minutes? So we had to reinvent, um, recontextualize, if you will, the, the character into um, this, uh, this character thriller setting that we have in Sound of Violence. But yeah, it's, uh, I, I just, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very, very lucky um, that uh, uh, my character seems to talk to, to amazing people. <laughs> I. Uh... I mean, yeah. And uh, speaking of Alexis, and, and let's obviously this is why we're we're talking because I, after watching Sound of Violence, I just uh, as I well we were talking earlier, but I really have been enjoying the subgenre of horror films that are really that are making music. It could either be just the sounds, the beats, or even vocals to now be kind of a starring role or supporting character more um, than just something, not that it's bad if you just, because a great score is a great score, but I just, I like it when I, I'm enjoying it when it's becoming part of the story. And um, did you find that to be somewhat challenging to do though um, within a feature? That was the, the core of what we, transferred from the short to, uh, to, to the feature. Um, this idea of musical experimentation between, between using, using um, the sounds, the, two types of sounds that are familiar in horror because we know the music is a prominent part of horror, but shifting their paradigms so that we can actually make music with flesh and, and make music the weapon, if you will. So like that, the, the fact is everything we learned by making the short was super useful when we developed the, the, the feature because um, Jakob Maninen, who, who did the music in, 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 in both, um, so he, he did it on his own on the, on the, on the short, but in the feature he was uh, alongside uh, Alexander Burke and Omar Al-Deeb. And we had also in both, um, we had UC Tegelman, this Finnish 
sound editor, supervising sound editor who works with Sam Raimi regularly, and who's also a musician. So he understands the sounds of gore and the sounds of um, and 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 musical um, rhythmics. So we we just we had those people who were who were already kind of part of the experiment, and mm -hmm. and and so as I wrote, I had people to send my weird ideas to. Um, oh. So I I was I was you know. Because I couldn't just it couldn't just be a drum machine anymore, so sure. it, it 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 had to be more. I mean, I made sure I, that the, the 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 drum machine part was in there, but I had to expand. It's a it's a symphony now, so I need to create all those things together. It, it, listen, this was you know a crazy idea that that somehow galvanized absolutely amazing people uh, to whom I'm extremely grateful to make it work. Um, and the fact that Jasmine is a musician herself. Um, mm -hmm. obviously helped because she had the, she had obviously a deep relationship with the character but also as a musician she had an interaction with the setups that were that was you know um, that she read as well musically so so and you can see it in you know she understands his groove in that mm -hmm. way and and so yeah oh, well I really enjoyed um, you know I I hadn't I never knew what uh, and I'll probably butcher this word but synesthesia Mm -hmm. I believe I never actually knew what that was until after seeing this and then um, researching that because I also found that was very unique in terms of, uh, you know, when I guess as a, an audience, as an audience member, being able to actually also visualize that was actually quite nice. Um, and it certainly added more of, um, I would say, uh, emotional stakes in terms of now I can see why, you know, well, I, I always wonder which would I, you know, be more upset with, you know, the loss of sight or the loss of um, hearing. And I would probably say it's the loss of hearing just because, again, I love music and I, I just, I really kind of enjoyed how you displayed that. Um, and I guess, obviously, as, as the story goes on, um, and we see that um, Alexis is really experimenting. Um, did you, as the writer, uh, kind of have fun with the, uh, with some, uh, I guess, the contraptions or the way that she would um, elicit those sounds? To uh, I, I mean, first, first and foremost, um, just going back at the beginning of your question on on synesthesia, I just we needed to formulate a visual way for the audience to capture her motivation. Mm -hmm. And that is where sounds are tricky because the, the reaction to sound is such a, it's a, it's a moment that we can capture, of course, with performances and, and stuff, but, but we feel that sometimes the audience needs a bit more to really kind of get invested in it. And, yes. and, and uh, so in a conversation with Hanu Aokia, we were talking about mo visual motivation and, and we discussed synesthesia. And synesthesia was a, you know, again, I, I researched it. I did, uh, like everything in this movie, everything is actually quite heavily researched. Like, for example, the fact that, you know, the difference between loss of hearing and deafness, because these are two different journeys and, um, and two different conditions. But that as well, we, were, we, were, we had to figure out what synesthesia um, entailed enough to know whether or not we could use it. So mm -hmm. we, and, and in research, we realized that actually, first of all, synesthesia is very different from one person who has it to another. Yes. Um, and, you know, it is debatable whether it is a condition or an ability to experience sound in a different dimension. And, um, and yeah, so we got to then create this visual language uh, of lights and color, um, initially inspired by Northern Lights, because, you know, I'm, I'm Finnish, so I guess thinking Northern Lights came naturally, and creating this environment that cocoons um, uh, Jasmine into her moments no matter what the destruction she's causing to really ground her into into music that's mm -hmm. all that matters to her so yeah. that's that was the important thing is creating that motivation to really show that she that to really mark the fact that her motivation is not about it's not blood it's sound and um and as far as the 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 the, the, the you know representing loss of hearing again you know with that with that being being um her stakes and and the possibility of losing it again we felt that it, if it was all you had, especially on the back of the trauma she experienced, yes, it 
that's all she, like that night, that fateful first night that we sh shoot in the movie, she lost, lost everything and then got given one thing back. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't wow. you hold on to that thing above all else? That, I did not think of it like that. And absolutely, yes, yes, I would. So this is what hearing means to her. Wow. And so this is where the journey afterwards, and especially in her later years, when, when she is threatened with the loss, that this sound, the, the synesthesia that is specific to the sounds of brutal um, violence has to mean so much because it is her, it's the way she feels alive, if you will. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. So, so, so the, the moment the threat of the loss became, um, yeah, and again, you know, with research, you know, because we we wanted to to cover that properly, we we spoke to 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 various. We had a consultant on set and everything to know. Okay, how how do we how do we do this right? Uh, because it's so. First of all, understanding the difference between deafness and loss of hearing, mm -hmm. and then picturing it appropriately. And I actually read some comments about some people um, from uh, the community who just praised us for trying to get it right, and some others who assumed that it was deafness, and therefore criticized the, 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 the fact that um, Camilla, who plays young Jasmine, and her mother are not very good at signing. And I said, well, she lost her hearing late. She, mm -hmm. This is all. So the fact is, is that somebody who is born deaf will, will have, that's all they have. So their, uh, their ability starts very early on. If you learn mm -hmm. it late, you will never be as proficient. So that clumsiness was actually on purpose because that's what made it authentic. We also asked, should we cast uh, a, a, an actress who is, who, who, who cannot hear or, and said, don't because she's not deaf. And so again, sorry, I'm, I'm expanding on no, that. No, I it, really, I, that's I, fascinating. And um, wow, it just makes it more authentic because yeah, no, that's. We push because we, you know, the, the, the thing is like, is that, you know, we, and this is why sometimes there's a, there's a sense that horror trivializes things. But mm -hmm. when when we address trauma and we address this, we actually we delve deep to make it, to try to get it right. Um, you know, and and it's it, it's interesting because it's also greatly rewarding as a journey for me because I'm writing this story from the outside in, and obviously it demands from me the certain rigor in in my in my uh representation of it and i just yeah I, I everything i learned and everything i i i could potentially put on screen was was uh done with the greatest respect wow i mean it shows i i will say um uh, obviously it's still a horror but i will say i was kind of well not kind of i was emotionally gutted because you actually also showed something that i personally would that the fear that I had for Alexis as you know also during this journey she's still kind of struggling with her music creatively and so when as she's already experimented at this point and she's you know displaying it to the class and they are just well they're not having it and then like one she's somewhat crushed and then obviously the hearing at that point going in and out and then i i mean my heart was racing because of well, what's going to happen now um i would like to know what um what it was like on set that day it that was just a very emotional and impactful scene in my opinion we we had we had a few moments of of, of deep emotion um uh on set um Interestingly, the scene, the classroom scene, was not written that way initially. Oh. It had, it, technically she was, she was supposed to, to lose her hearing after. Ooh. But, but I, I just, we just felt that, again, you know, this is her moment of saying, hey, this is something I've done. This is like, mm -hmm. you know. And, and yet she has met with backlash and loses her hearing. Like she has, like, it's almost like she, she sees the violence of, of the reaction and cannot react to it anymore. Mm -hmm. And 
this scene was so pivotal in turning turning the screw on her motivation mm -hmm. that that we just decided that this way was more intense. And this is a great thing about about having a performer like Jasmine, is that even in the previous version, which was more chatty, there was more mm -hmm. more interaction with the students. We 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 just we always had this this real sense of loss um, as far as Alexis characters from Jasmine because she's she has an ability to act with her eyes that is just second yes. to none. And and so in that moment, the way she was looking at the students was always so on point that we had the material to really make it to make it about that because that's what that's all she's like she can't hear them but she can see them so she sees the rage yeah and she can and so anyway th this moment was we just just turned it up to 11 with the uh, with um, the, the 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 concentration of the of the moment and i um you know every moment on set has been a joy to shoot mm -hmm. and it's true that this one this one uh, was was a fun day it was a complicated day because you know a lot of students a lot of things a lot of, you know it's a lot going on um you know we were obviously shooting every class day uh on the same uh run and so it was it was tricky it was really tricky but it was a, it was a lot of fun and again with somebody like jasmine in the middle of it you know everything's a joy um i also want to praise also uh lily simmons as well um because i really enjoyed that while we still obviously have alexis on her journey we also have her roommate kind of what i felt like was somewhat grounding her even though she was unwillingly participating in these acts that she was unaware of you know lily um first of all lily and jasmine the first time they met clicked like clicked and it was obviously great because they were about to play the best friends. So you needed to have that connection. So that was great. Lily is an actress I've been following for a long, long time. I've been hoping to work with her for a long time. And so I was so happy and lucky that we got her on this. And, and she is, she is the audience. She is the audience. She is, she is the closest to the audience's experience as possible because they're very close to Alexis seeing everything, but not knowing everything. And then this whole thing unravels, you, you have a sense of, of um of the audience is like okay so marie is is us yes okay and and um and the, the interesting thing about that is that again you know and you know bear in mind i've been a producer for 17 years but this was my feature debut as a director i being blessed with such level of acting is you know it makes my job easier but it also um it helps my um like how far we can push each situation to really and and you know english is not my first language so mm -hmm. lily and jasmine both helped took the time to just you know we were sharing notes and just trying to make the dialogue feel a little bit more natural more on like they would say that kind of thing and okay and and she really warmed to the to the character of marie to make her not never a passenger in this story despite everything she doesn't know Mm -hmm. um and you know the fact that the fact that she you know on the back of the gallery she still comes and and, and wants to address this thing about it. it just you have those moments like again at the forefront of her mind there's this complex relationship of friendship um and 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 all this as well in 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 in, in effect makes also the presence of duke james jagger all the more important because this is it's the weird triangle but if it's like a triangle, if we let one side of it, of it down, it all collapses. So mm -hmm. um, I, I, again, I'm just, I'm so grateful to, to, to those three. They just, they, they just pushed it and they understood it and they just, and they really committed to the relationships of those characters to make it, to make it work. And, uh, and I'm, I'm just, you know, as I said, lucky. I, I, we won't, well, I mean, obviously I'll put on here too, that we're, we're kind of talking spoilers and I, I hope everyone that I will, continue to say, please go see this movie. But um, I, um, that ending, which I'll, I'll just try and be as ambiguous, but wow, because uh, that was gut wrench. That was actually gut wrenching in terms of, because you could certainly see as, as we're going through the movie, obviously, as, as you had mentioned, you know, ja or Alexis is trying to hold on to that one thing 
and at all costs. So even those that mean the most to her or love, I, the goal is to always hold on to that one thing. So to have everything in the final act just um, in a sense, like the dominoes fall like that was, I was not expecting that. Um, to well, be honest. Think, think about the, uh, the, the, the contrast between the beginning and the end. At the beginning, she loses everything and gets one thing back. At the end, she, she, she thinks she's got everything and we take away the one thing that matters. Yes. I... It, it's, the, 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 cool. the interesting thing about, the, the, the interesting thing about this, this dichotomy is that, is that it also reminds people that the journey, because... Um, you know, it's a naturally it's a divisive movie, which is normal, which is due to its genre and its topic yeah. and subject matter and everything. But and the ending is similarly divisive because it is a committed ending. It's not just a flimsy, you know, whatever. It's just you know. <laughs> yeah, no, um, there was no. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I so I I love the fact that people, you know, in fact, actually, what my my first meeting was James uh, Jagger. He told me that what, he read the script and it was like he was in all of the script, but he said to me he he got mad at me for the ending. And I loved it because, because in in essence of everything for him as well, it's just like yeah. Um, but the 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 interesting thing about about that ending, without spoiling it, is that is that it is it is a combination of of everything that Alexis has put into her own journey as well, and it's sure. it's a it's a very. Um, it's it's meant to also anger as much as it's meant to 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 oh. to, to, to because it it's not that I'm I'm trying to shock or I'm trying to do no I'm just saying I'm just saying I, so a lot of people will 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 have asked me are you expecting us to sympathize with her and I said no <laughs> I'm not I'm not asking you to sympathize with her I'm just saying just listen to her see what she does try to understand her not forgive her she does unspeakable things. But, oh, absolutely! And, and, I... and that, that that ending that ending, it, what is interesting to to see is to see everything that is uh, that is gained and lost in in that really weird mayhemy moment. I yeah no I I will say I I I think there was the only the classroom scene probably is where I, I sympathized with her, but everything else I mean I felt for her, but it, at the end of the day she's still a killer. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> um, but I think. Part of that, though, I could totally see was also Jasmine's performance. Like, it was hard not to. Um, I, in my mind, I was just rooting the entire time, but I'm like, ah, you're still, you're still very bad. But I get it. <laughs> I was like, ah. yeah. um, the other thing that uh, I also was uh, one of my favorite things is while you still have this complex and emotional journey or story. I loved the bits of gore. Well, there's actually one scene in particular, but uh, the this was this movie is gory, and it it, it that satisfies me to my core. <laughs> I would. And like here's to the answer. Here's the answer to that. <laughs> it's not as gory as you think, and I, I'm serious about this. A lot of people feel at the end of the day that they've seen a lot more than they have, and I'm going to send you to the short. No, oh, that's true. I as a as a as a as a measuring tool. And then, and then, and then, and then the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 you look at Sound of Violence, it's just, the experience is so, oh, so much going on with the, you know, especially with the synesthesia that we actually perhaps see, think we see more than we do. And, and, and mm -hmm. also remember whose perspective we're always on. That's actually, oh, man. Hmm. I can't wait to rewatch this again now. I'm going to have to think about that. I uh, I watched the short multiple times a day just because I really enjoy it. And it's, um, Thank you. but huh, that, that puts things into a different perspective. I will have to, I just keep thinking of the um, studio scene because I thought, I mean, was not expecting that. I mean, I thought something was going to happen, but. Mm. Well, revisit it with the, and look at, look at the camera work. Oh man! Oh, that's exciting. That's exciting for me as a um, a viewer. I I'm, I will do that actually. Um, I guess bearing in mind as well where it is in the movie, uh, and this is I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this comment spoiler free. But think about where we are in the movie and the just a pivotal moment 
that we that we have and look at the perception changing between wow between be, between pre-classroom and after classroom and then and then i'll just you know i'll leave it at that Ooh. yeah it's it, it's a it's a lot of it, like, it, it it's funny because because um you know it's it's you know we were limited obviously in resources we had, we didn't have everything possible to do and you know and therefore there are of course some shortcomings in this film that I'll completely own up to, um, but 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 the one thing that we have is uh, is like okay I'm gonna make myself sound a bit pompous now but this my favorite <laughs> my my favorite quote um, from from Kubrick is I I don't always know what I want but I know what I don't want. <laughs> and 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 meanwhile, my crew says that I always I'm very clear about what I want. So make of that what you wish, and uh, and and just uh, there's a lot of things that are very inten intentional there, and also there's a lot of Easter eggs. Oh, I am. This actually just makes it more enjoyable now in terms of I love rewatching films, um, especially if I enjoy them. And this is a film that I'm looking forward now to revisit because I will pay Thank attention you. to that because, huh, I think honestly, um, the first, obviously the, the first time that I watched it though, I, I mean, I picked up on a few things, but I will say, I, I think I was just so in tune with um, Alexis that I, I guess I kind of had some blinders on and didn't pay attention to maybe I was kind of like Alexis and it's, I didn't pay attention to the surroundings as I was solely focused on Alexis. And to be honest, every time there was a pivotal uh, moment in the film that centered around music, like I was, I would say I would probably hyper-focused then because that was, uh, I will then ask, uh, as you stated, you wanted to, you know, you couldn't just have the, um, I guess in the short, you have that one kill, but in this you have different ways. And um, I would say the one that I found the most clever because I, I also didn't see that coming, um, just the harp situation and how that, where, <laughs> I have to ask, where did you come up with some of these um, designs or you, you just, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, don't worry that my experimentation is fine i haven't found the body <laughs> i mean maybe that's all that matters um but... no it, it, it's um you know what it's it's interesting because again you know i had a deep relationship with, with drum machines obviously because of the documentary so my understanding as well there's a logic to the idea of the violence of beats you know it's kind of mm -hmm. um it's i didn't have to to sort of explain that one uh too much um because Again, yeah, it's uh, they, they know, you know, a lot of people know my, my 808 documentary. So I just like, there's a sense to, to that part of the madness. But after that, I was like, okay, but how do I make other murders and potentially upstage it? Yeah. And, um, and so I had to delve into, into my, my, uh, my notepad and, uh, and my web browser and, um, <laughs> and, and, uh, and just go through in instruments that I liked and see if I could turn their core functionality in something gruesome. pretty gruesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, and it, it's, it it's, it's a weird one because, yeah, of course, I'm challenging what the reality of their functionalities are, but that's <laughs> fine. I'm just like, this is, I'm not here to say, well, no, this could totally happen. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it's like, you know, we're using things. If we extrapolate what is at the core of those instruments, what would be terrifying about it? And, um, and, uh, and, and yeah, I, I had a lot of fun, and uh, and it's also the the funny what the the ones that didn't make the movie, uh, that I that 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 uh, there was one in particular that was huge. It was just there was supposed to be the finale, and I hated it as the ending. I love it as a gag, but I just didn't like it as a, as the finale because I I um and I just didn't find it um right. Um, and I uh, but so yeah, I have this one big contraption that I have written up that um, that um, if anybody's crazy enough to, to ask me to make a sequel or to prepare one or to write <laughs> one, um, I probably will, will start with that one. Um, but the, um, wow. the, interesting, the, the interesting thing is that, is that um, you know, talking about the finale is that I, I, I felt like, you know, again, every murder that I was creating was supposed to be its own 
art piece like it, it was for me in my oh, mind it was okay. like I, I was like i was like creating those as installation art mm -hmm. um and and the 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 and and for the finale to work i you know i i just couldn't go with something that went necessarily along with everything and again i don't want to spoil anything but i all i'm just going to say is that final scene came to me in a dream and uh, and I I, I I was very frustrated with the ending. As I said, I had this elaborate contraption that was ending the movie, and I just felt it was stupid. I, not the contraption. I love it, as I said, but it just did, it, didn't <laughs> it didn't work, work. as the ending. And, okay. And and, and um, uh, I wanted to have a more meditative sense of of the meaning of the film uh, at the end. And so, in the middle of the night, I had this vision, uh, and um, the next morning, I sketched it up, and uh, and I sent it to uh to Hanno Aokia and to uh, Robert Bravo who does my special effects and I sent him it's like this is what I just saw and um needless to say that uh I've I've had them worried a few times and this 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 one was definitely up there <laughs> I uh, you know again I I definitely um uh, will urge a lot of people to see this just because um it I felt it to be, um, again, I think within um, movies now, I think originality is sometimes we're, we're losing that because we, not that there's problem with sequels because I still love my sequels as well and all at least big movies, but I do feel that sometimes we don't get, um, like I, I, I would have loved to have seen this on the big screen. I, I truly just, uh, that sound system and just all of that. Um, but this is definitely a hidden gem that I think everyone I concur. Go I, I mean, you know, we 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 had a, obviously it was COVID. Everything was kind of um, so we had a limited theatrical um, here in LA and um, in a couple of other markets. But you know, it was very limited due to the fact that we were, you know, and the world was barely reopening at the time, and there was still a lot of unknowns, and people were certainly not going to the movies in a rush. Um, oh, sure. But meanwhile, uh, and also we were doing festivals remotely because we premiered at South by virtually. We went to uh, to. Uh, to Beef, to Fantasche Poa, to, to a whole bunch of them virtually. And then the first one that we had in person was uh, in uh, late August, um, Fright Fest in London. And they gave my movie their biggest screen and their biggest system, their IMAX screen. Oh, and wow. And so I sat there and I saw the, because I was waiting for the Q&A and I mean, I saw the beginning and stuff, but I just... Uh, then I had to, we had two screens uh, happening concurrently. So I went to watch the opening, which was very satisfying. But then I went to open the other screening. And then I went back and watched the end of the movie on this huge screen. And I was there like I was quite I, I was at the front, but it, there's a huge distance between the screen. So I was like just like that laying back, watching up. And and I had, you know, especially in that I, I it's funny how that end scene always brings tears to my eyes. But then I was like like just watching it that, that big I was I was just I I was really really emotional um and the sound system made it really like it was it was loud it was really sort of yeah it's a it's a movie that uh, unfortunately I, I maybe in other circumstances more, more people would have had the chance to watch it in the theaters um we just but just to to, to continue with our luck with that uh, we we just had a na nationwide release in finland um which was very exciting because we just finished our our um our festival tour uh in 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 helsinki in finland and it was and jasmine got to finally come along to a festival and it was, saw. In my, it was in my home you know my home country and everything oh. and then and and that was great and then i thought we get our nationwide uh, theatrical and the government shuts down the theaters <laughs> Oh no! It was clearly because of my film, because obviously, it was yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was because of, of, of the surge in COVID. It was just like, oh my god! Like this is, um, it, it's a funny thing. But 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 that about it, that aside, it's just um, we got to do a few festivals in person, and that was great. You know, we I Fright Fest, uh, uh yeah, Night Visions in Helsinki, and um, and and that for me was always um that's always different because this movie watching it in in a theater with an audience so it's a different thing when you premiere a movie virtually because obviously people tend to be distracted double screen blah, blah. oh you put sure them in a, you watch my movie and sat down in a theater um and you can munch on your popcorn because i'll be louder than that 
<laughs> I, I will tell you this was this is a movie I didn't want to take my eyes off of so it had my full attention for because the opening was also jarring I wasn't expecting again that's why this film was just so good there was just so many unexpected things happening but Thank then you so much uh, again there were times that you could certainly relate um to the characters and I do also just because we talk about diversity representation, I, and this is why I also am a fan of Jasmine because she is queer and want, is openly playing like these queer roles. So I was happy to see that and it was very natural. It didn't like, it was just, to me, it was beautiful. Like I was just so happy to see that. I appreciate so. it. I really do. And, and I, and you know, and this is, I tried to write this script with an open mind um, of questions essentially because you know, I'm telling the story about queer black women. I need to write it with open question. And then when I got to meet Jasmine, she met me the rest of the way, if you will. She she brought her authenticity to make sure that, that, that first of all, she was very happy that the movie had no stereotypes or cliches. Exactly, but, yes. But she also, that, you know, that was obviously great to hear the, on our first meeting. And, um, but then, then on top of that, she, we constantly made sure that 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 she felt that that the representation was was correct, and also what she really liked, which also matters to me, is that she is a queer black woman. But that has nothing to do. I'm not I'm not correlating that with why she's killing. Oh, I know it. it that's it's just that's who she is. Mm-hmm. So uh, actually, Jasmine put it very well in uh, saying that you know we just you know she's. She's just a tortured artist and a killer. Yeah. It's, and that's, and, and, but, but the, the, the identity is just, you know, the, the fact is when I'm writing, I'm writing characters that come to my mind and I like to embrace the identity that they have when they, when they come to my mind, the same way as like, you know, I travel the world. I live, I live myself a very sort of international life. So I, I, I get to meet lots of people. And so that I'm meeting lots of people means that my, my scripts are going to benefit from that because I'm not going to necessarily try to just, um, be linear about it i'm going to try to remember somebody i met somewhere and just how and you know and, and i just i feel i feel i feel it's um it's good and i'm it's, the fact that jasmine is just blowing up right now is amazing i love it i'm so happy i'm so proud of her um she i've seen scream and uh and i've seen yellow jackets and um <laughs> and uh and occasionally we get mentioned as a subtext like by the way she's also in this um but she is but the fact is is that all those three projects um, embrace who she is, and, yep. uh, and 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 she's she's first and foremost a fantastic actress. Like fantastic. Yes, she's just awesome. And then on top of that, the fact that the roles, you know, give her a sense of of comfort and and being seen. And she very kindly posted at the end of our shoot that she had never felt so safe and and um and seen on, on a set as she had on our, on ours and i just i'm i'm, I'm extremely grateful because you know we try we, we sure as hell try and and uh, and um well if it gets me to work with people like jasmine i'm just a very very lucky person it came across like i said for me it's it was nice to see it there weren't like stereotypes or tropes and honestly it, that wasn't at, that wasn't the story it just like in life it was just it, it just felt natural. And so I, you know, I mean, if you ever need a, you know, fat, gay, bearded Asian, you can call me, but I, I will say, I, I just, I, I love Jasmine, but I just enjoyed this story because it felt just authentic. And I think you did a Thank great you job. So much. Um, Thank you so much. I think all that the actors in this were phenomenal. Um, and I also want to shout out because I really also still enjoyed the, um, the police woman. I mean, I was like, Tessa Monroe. Yeah. <laughs> Detective Fuentes. I mean, she had her work cut out for her. Let me let me just say that. Um, it's a, it's a, you know creating the police dynamic in that story was about trying to see, you know, with 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 sort of the magnitude and pace of the creativity of of Alexis that we couldn't have a police that was sort of always figuring things out it's too quick mm-hmm. and you know it all ha- like i mean the fact is the planning for for alexis started a long time that's why we had this moment where she looks under the tarp and, and she has those things ready to go 
her urgency as she's losing her hearing is just to go, go, go. Yes. There's no police in the world that could catch up with us. Like, of course, this is, this <laughs> is, yeah, of course, it's her, done it, it's her, the end. No, I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to have a police that just, there was as taken aback as the audience, you know? That's um, very true. And, and, and I just, and yeah, we, you know, we wanted her to be able to recognize the basics of music and maybe find a correlation into this. But the, the, uh, the, the interesting, the interesting dynamic with um, uh, a police playing catch up in this situation is just, and even her collective points throughout are very serendipitous because it's still so absurd to her um, that I had fun with that. Really enjoyed it. So, well, um, I just, well, actually I do have two, a couple final questions. One, what do you hope that um, your audience gets from this film? Like you said, I guess I didn't think of it as divisive, but it's interesting to hear that. So what do you hope that audiences um, take away from this film? I hope they tap along and feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, uh, I, think, I think I want them to, to um, see her as an artist first and foremost, not a killer. She's not a typical serial killer. She's an artist. She is, um, you know, obviously with the, with the depths of trauma of everything that goes with it, but the, 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 just see her as an artist, understand her artistic motivation in the midst of it. That's, that's what I'm hoping. I'm not asking you to like it. I'm not asking you to, to, to go along with it, but just understand that this is artistic creativity and creativity is naturally, naturally destructive. That is just something that I, I really greatly believe in because you always have to displace something in order to create something new. So you just, it's, it's, um, and so that's one thing which I, I do hope that the audiences um, get into. Um, and the second part is, I just want, I just hope people to, to see how many fresh concepts there are available in indie horror. I'm not Ooh. saying that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a prime example. I'm just saying I'm one of many. We are the indie horror community is is wide, and they just need to be helped and championed and supported because, you know, we don't get necessity. We we don't make the, you know, horror saves the box office time and time again. I mean, right now, Scream is obviously top top of the box office, but also movies like ours, which are more experimental, indie horror filmmakers or mad scientists trying to innovate and and advance cinema. And I just I just hope that people just uh, with movie like ours, um, get to, you know. Give it a chance. Give give a chance to indie horror because we there, there's some really crazy stories to tell. Even though they have flaws, that's okay. We're not supposed to be. We don't have the budget not to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just like you know, just like give me the full budget I was hoping for, um, <laughs> and, and I'll I'll outperform every Marvel movie on the on. The, but no, it's actually actually somebody said that uh, this was the the origin story of a supervillain. I mean. That's that's not a bad take. I like it. I, I like this idea. I like it. Uh, like yeah, <laughs> I, I would like to explore that. I mean, if you tell me that we're going to get a sequel because of that, I would love to see that. I, I, you know, um, I haven't been uh, approached yet for a sequel. I hope somebody will. Uh, but because uh, there is a there is an idea. There is a, a, a there's a there's a story. Oh, that's exciting. Um, but uh, but uh, and it's very different. Um, it's like kind of, you know, it's because it we, we obviously build a universe and the, the funny thing is to also shift that universe on its head. So, you know, anybody, anybody who wants to, to, to uh, get into that knows where to find me. <laughs> I mean, I like that idea. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, I guess then what I, my final question then before I wrap up then is uh, speaking of indie horror or just horror in general, has there been anything um, this past year that um, just either, I mean, cause I think there was a lot, there was many, we had a lot of great um, properties come out, but what surprised you or what were you just, yeah, what surprised you the most this past year? Um, well, first of all, I think it's been a great year for horror. I think yeah. um, there were some really, really great titles um i think probably one of my favorite might be censor um i think prano is going to be a superstar i think she is just i mean you know every time i get featured in the same list as her i feel like 
Um, and I got to meet her and she's great. And, um, and, you know, I, I, I feel that, uh, I also, I think, um, we, you know, in the, the realm of horror and comedy, it's very hard to mix genres. It's really, really, really complicated. It's hard to sell as well, but it's, yeah. it's tricky. And I think we had a great example with Josh Rubin's, uh, Werewolves, uh, Within. Of, uh, it's, it's just, uh, you know, I, and, and I, I saw it at Tribeca and, and, and I got to meet Josh and yeah, I hope somebody gives him, uh, he's a dark man remake. Oh my gosh. I think that I, I see him tweet about it all the time. And I'm like, that would be amazing because we haven't seen dark man in forever. I would love to see his take because werewolves within was just, Oh, that was, was so just, much fun. And I'll leave you with one more thing. I, you know, I think, um, in 2021, another thing that was good for horror was actually not, it's not about a movie. It's not about, it's about the horror community. I think, um, with platforms like Clubhouse, we kind of really came together and got to to um, make uh, great connections and conversations around horror. Um, and, you know, uh, out of it, for example, so, you know, I run a room on, on, on most Mondays lately. It's been most disruptive because I've had a lot going on, but it's called From Short to Feature, trying to give advice about short filmmaking to feature filmmaking and, and pointers on that. And as well, I'm part of the Cloud House of Horror. And we just connect so my buddy jed um and sebastian so jed shepherd and sebastian Basil and stuff we, we we just we um try to create things and opportunities and platforms to discuss and and sebastian actually created a horror anthology um out of clubhouse planet with writers he found on clubhouse um and wow. uh it, it's called symphony and that's that's coming out uh, later this year um, and because of that moment, which was he recruited them in a conversation, they had a writer's room and people sent him a few scripts. Um, he then came back and asked us to jump on board along with uh, Josh Stolberg, you know, one of the writers of, of uh, Spiral and, and Jigsaw, um, or the writer of, of Spiral and Jigsaw and many other uh, horror movies. Um, Jed is on board and, and, and uh, you know, we, we did a contest. We uh, asked writers from Clubhouse to send us scripts and we got 700 scripts to read and within that and then we picked 10 and so in 2021 we got to get this off the ground and now now this year in 2022 where it's going into production and we're going to change the life of uh, 10 filmmakers and storytellers by giving them something that we were we've all been kind of pushing for for ourselves when we were getting our films off the ground it's like here we're going to get them their short films part of this anthology that's going to um go far and wide and highlight the, the 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 breadth and and creativity in the horror uh, community and uh, we're very very excited. Some of the stories that we've picked are absolute killer, and so many actually uh, people who were who are in the top ten or some that who aren't, we are actually already working with on on other things. So we got to discover some amazing talent and and from from everywhere around the world and and yeah, we're very proud. And again, so that's one thing which I'll say about the horror community that's in twenty twenty one. We champion each other. <laughs> I think that's we, we, amazing. We, yeah, we love championing each other, and uh, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm extremely proud of being part of this, and uh, and uh, and I will help everybody uh, that I can when I can in the right things. And well, for now we have I'm I'm trying to help those filmmakers and and um, and a few others around. And uh, yeah, I, again, it's it's just it was humbling to be part of it, to be asked to be part of it, but also the qualities of the stories we were sent. I am really excited. I mean, one, I will say, um, as somebody new to the realm of podcasting and um, reviewing, uh, just all that, I would say the horror community is probably one of the best. Um, and so to hear that, that's really awesome. Also, just that means there, there's just so much talent out there. And so it's really great to hear that you all are giving a voice to new creators. I, I'm excited for that. And and you know, and I can tell you the the the, the horror world is diverse. It's it, the stories are come from everywhere. Or they all tap into many cultures, many backgrounds, many stories, many individuals. And it's just, and this is what's going to make horror so so good. As it, you know, horror is a it is not a trend. It's it's a constant of things because we always get put aside as the weirdos. But fundamentally, um, we also are the creators and the mad scientists. And I can tell you, like all those amazing diverse voices that have come to us with those amazing stories. We can't wait to just elevate them and just do everything we can to champion them because man, they're good. 
They're so good. Like one of the best reviewed films this past year, which I get annoyed because obviously horror gets no awards love, period, in my opinion, um, was Titan. I mean... Yeah, how could I not m- mention Titan? I'm half French as well. So <laughs> I, that that's my that's my little... <laughs> um, my French, I was so happy because it was in, as well. Remember, Titan is not just a genre piece that went into genre festivals. It's Cannes. It was can. Oh, it was like uh, it... it was just so big, and it was just so, and it's just like, and but but but, I mean, she's fantastic. I I, I don't know if you've seen uh, Raw, uh, her previous movie, mm-hmm. um, that which was is something else. Cool. That was so incredible, such an incredible, and she, and every, she she manages to to turn intimacy into tension and and turn all those personal journey, and she creates those setups, which she has really committed herself. And she creates the oh my! I, I mean, Titan was a journey. Titan was definitely a journey, and uh, and I, I'm all the love it's getting in awards and everything. It's it it's deserved. <laughs> it's very Absolutely, much deserved. I, it's so it's so awesome to see. And it I kept telling everyone like you guys, I could tell you kind of the synopsis of this story, but I promise you, the <laughs> acting, the st- like everything was just so good. And I think horror this past year has probably been some of the best um, in a while because one, if it's at least not part of the conversation because, you know, Malignant was very divisive, which is a shame because I thought it was so good and so camp. So much fun. <laughs> Isn't it fun to see to see somebody as established as, as James Wan going, hey, everybody, I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. Cool? Cool. Done. I loved it. I it's mean- so unapologetic. That film is just unapologetic. It's like, you know what? Just... Fight across the cop, cop station, done. And I just, I, I mean, it's the dream of every filmmaker to reach a moment in your career when you go like, so this is my script. <laughs> and if you don't like it, I don't care, but I'm gonna do it, cool. And, and just that he got given the means and the, and, and, and even in his interviews, he's like, yeah, I just, I just had fun with it. I'm like, oh, this is so nice. <laughs> like reaching a moment where you get given Essentially, the, the, you get the keys and say, you know, you know that very nice car there? Do whatever the hell you want with it. <laughs> and Malignant is like, of course, Malignant is not perfect. It was never meant to be. It's, it's a trip. It's supposed to be like, oh it's, 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 him, it's him putting out there something that's just like, okay, well, you know what? Every, no, just, there's no rules. We're just going to have fun. And, and if you watch it like that, it's, you know, in a way, you know, I'll say because um, because many people said *Malignant* is a great double play with my film, and I'm like, I I, I love that because if you watch those two, these are two movies that you need to watch with the handbrake off. Don't think about it too much. Don't, don't try to over rationalize. Just go with the journey. I need you to go through the journey of Alexis with mine, and I need you to go with with, with her journey in *Malignant*, and just just go with it. Just see where it takes you, and just try to. Because we are so um, critical of what we watch, trying to always rationalize it as we watch it. That sometimes, sometimes it's like you know, um, I said something yesterday in the um, and this is in the documentary about mental health and horror. Is that I don't remember watching a bad horror movie as a kid, and this is not because I didn't watch bad horror movies. <laughs> Hell, I watched a lot of movies that I watched later. Going, oh, but I was not here to judge. I was there to have fun. And yep. that's that's what that's what movies like *Malignant* and *Mine*, um, you know, give you. And um, and I just uh, I um, yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah. So every time I I I, I was I was um, asked, you know, would you play your movie alongside *Malignant*? I'm like, hell yeah, and add bliss to the trio, and then have have a very good evening. <laughs> I mean, I don't have that much time tonight, but I will tell you, you just gave me an idea for a double feature, and I'm really excited. Um, because I, I love both films and the idea, man, I'm just going to go make some popcorn. I mean, that's actually not a bad idea. Oh, that's, that's the other double play. Bliss, Bliss, Sound of Violence is another, you know, uh, double play. A triple play works better because you watch, you watch all the, <laughs> like, you know, but as you said, that's a six hour commitment. So. Ooh, yeah. I could do that uh, this hours, weekend though. Hours, right? I mean, it's. Four and a half hours. But it'd be worth it because hmm. either way, I, I would also like to say I'm very humbled and honored that uh, you took time out of your day to speak with uh, speak with me because this was 
really fun and it was great hearing about the film uh, and just hearing well it's also great to uh when you get to meet filmmakers but then you find out uh just what you're doing for the horror community i gotta say that's fantastic and i also that you're a part of the mental health and horror documentary because i can't wait for that to be completed as well i, got, I just I got emotional i got emotional during the interview you I know, mean, I'm kind of getting like, a little misty. I just talked of uh, just hearing your passion for horror, what you're giving back to the community. And I, my gosh, just stand up, dude, in my opinion. So. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. I mean, I mean, this, this has been so much fun and I'm, uh, you know, I'm very, I'm very glad you reached out because, uh, because, you know, as I said, I saw your excitement about the film and, and there's nothing I love more than just to have it talk like that and excited to you know chat about this film that is not um you know it's a it's a it's an unusual film so so i i uh, i appreciate it uh well it, it it's just done i thought it was done so well it's definitely one of my favorites of this past year um i i actually need to go download the soundtrack now i'm thinking about it because i would like to listen more to that as well yeah uh, we, we haven't released it but i can like oh. I, I think i like i you know the funny thing is because it's so specific to the story and it's in a way you listen to it it's 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 so specific that it's just hard to to um to imagine um how but we actually have been recently now approached for uh, to to release it so it might come soon <laughs> I mean I would buy it I really would I um <laughs> it's... And, uh, I mean I might I, you know with my music uh, uh industry sort of background I I um I'd like to see it remixed. Ooh, well, that would be really good. I <laughs> so, that, so who knows? Maybe for the for you know, as we approach the the year, the one year anniversary of the release, maybe that's something we'll put out there—a remix contest or something. Oh, that, that you heard, that, you heard that, it first, people. I, you heard that it first. Just has me so excited! Like, oh my goodness! I, I <laughs> again, lately, like I said, music and horror has just been so good this past year. Oh my goodness! Well. I, again, Alex, I, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, if I had my other co-host here, they'd be like, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. But honestly, I'm just so like blown away by it. this was truly wonderful. I want people to go see this. If you have Showtime, it's on Showtime. If not, I believe it's on video on demand or you could just Yeah, it's on it. all, the di all the digital stores. And if you're not in the US, it, it's out right now in the UK as well. All digital stores and streaming on Sky and it's out in Korea, it's out Ooh. in Finland, it's out in Sweden, it's out in a whole bunch of countries. But anyway, so just, you know, look it up. And and if it's not out in your country, just just riot. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the French. We're not out in front. We're not out in France. What? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, it's it's out there. Go watch it. I promise you, you will have a I have a feeling now, as we've talked about it, everyone's going to have a different emotional experience with it, but uh, the journey is amazing. So thank you. Um, and with that, I will just say goodbye. And again, thank you. Thank you so much. This was great fun. You have been listening to the Horror Hour. See you next time.